Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Mi Kyung Shin, Education Specialist in Asian Development Bank. Uh, I would like to welcome everybody, everyone who are making time to join this webinar. The topic of uh, this webinar is can, is can online open secondary education can provide uh, alternative uh, learning pathway for expanding access and improving quality. And ADB has prepared this webinar with uh, Korean Korean Education Development Institute together, and in from ADB site, uh, ADB expert from education and rural de rural development and food security and digital technology development are here to discuss about this issue. Yes, we have uh, we have experienced the unprecedented uh, pandemic and very long school closure, and there are big concern about uh, learning loss and big high high dropout rate in secondary school, especially in secondary education level. Dropout uh, rate is big concern, and many governments are paying attention to reduce their uh, dropout rate in secondary education. But however, as well as uh, in Invi inviting adolescents to school and uh, let coming coming back to school, we have to think about uh, how to we support out of students, out of school youth, who cannot come back to school because of many various uh, factors like uh, family background, uh, family financial uh, difficulties, and uh, working getting job already. So, and online open high school programs. Uh, one of the alternative way to to support them to continue their study. So uh, for that, for this issue, we we would like to listen Korean and Philippine uh, cases. Uh, Korean case has very uh, long journey, long history, and organized and uh, embedded in public education system and contribute for achieving universal uh, secondary education uh, 19, 1985. And Philippine case is very innovative and effective effective movement in South Asia, which provides a total program through online and aligned with the junior high school uh, certificate, which is very exemplary case for our school youth students. So I hope, uh, I hope this webinar give each country's uh, expert to, to discuss this issue, uh, their, to discuss their appropriate policy in their country to increase the enrollment in secondary education and improve the quality. Mm. Now, let me introduce the, our uh, welcoming remark, present, welcoming remark, welcome our, uh, Introduce the president of uh, Korean Education Development Institute as for welcoming remarks. So, Dr. Bang Nan Yu. Dr. Bang, I, I would like to uh, introduce the president of Korean Education Development Institute, Dr. Bang Nan Yu, for welcoming remarks. Because of the ske uh, schedule conflict, she sent us a recorded remarks. Please, let's hear her remarks. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the Korean Educational Development Institute, I welcome all of you to the KD and ADB Education Agriculture Sector Thematic Group Joint Webinar. Thank you, distinguished guests, colleagues, and educational experts around the world for virtually joining us today. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Chief of Education Sector Group of ADB, Mr. Brajesh, and all the ADB Education Sector Group team for their unwavering support. The topic of learning loss from COVID-19 and ways to recover from the damage uh, continue to attract worldwide attention. The prolonged COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted learning opportunities for millions of children across the world. And as now that COVID-19 gradually decreases in influence, discussions on post-COVID and learning recovery gained active recognition. This is in line with the topic of this webinar, Expanding Education Access. Especially, 
this seminar with a specific case called the Open High School Program. We will have a great opportunity to exchange thoughts and opinions after the presentation from Korea and the Philippines. Among the cases, open high schools in Korea have a relatively long history and the function of the schools have fluctuated over time. Open high schools in Korea were not first established with the purpose of alternative education for lessening the learning loss of students due to COVID-19. Rather, they were founded in 1974 and operated through broadcasting and communication for youth and adults who have difficulties entering and continuing their secondary education. And this long history of open high schools became an asset in terms of online contents, method, approaches, and platforms when online education were conducted during the school closure period due to COVID-19. Uh, it is my sincere hope that what is presented and discussed here today, including the case of the Korean Open High School Policy, can provide insight to many colleagues around the world and can encourage each and every one of us here to support all the work that has been done regarding the expansion of education access and learning recovery. Let us appreciate what has been done and find insight for what comes tomorrow. Once again, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the organizers, speakers, and all participants for your time and interest in this event. Thank you. Thank you so much for the welcoming remarks. CADIC, uh, Korea Education and Development Institute, is the uh, representative institute in Korean government government affiliated uh, research institute. They produced and they developed all of the Korean uh, education uh, education policies and persuaded politicians, persuaded the government to invest uh, a lot of invest budget to education. So their their uh, kind of contribution for education development in Korea is. Uh, enormous. So I hope we can hear a very good story from Korean side. Okay, thank you. And uh, for the second welcoming remarks from ADB, I would like to introduce uh, Ching Pang, uh, Dr. Ching Pang Zhang, the Chief of Rural Depart Development and Food, Food Security Thematic Group. Yes, uh, actually, the, the Brothers Pants, the Chief of Education Sector Groups, are supposed to, to give the welcoming remarks it's because of urgent, urgent issues. We are, we, uh, we have a uh, ching pang. I think we are sorry for the changes, but which is better for, we start from broader perspective with a uh, broader perspective. Ching pang, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, let me, uh, on behalf of both the education sector group and the rural development Food security group, to welcome you attend the very important uh, webinar. Uh, again, I would be very happy and uh, very pleasure to uh, organize this, this important webinar with the Korean uh, Education Development Institute. Uh, as the chief of the rural development Food security group, I believe uh, expanding uh, secondary education opportunities and improving the quality of the education now is very, very timely and also critical. As Laura, we are supporting our DMCs in uh, green rural recovery and also resilience. It is indeed a strategic and inclusive way of uh, catalyzing the use of the new technology to modernize mm -hmm. agricultural and also expanded economic opportunities to reduce the, the existing gaps between the urban and rural areas. This will be a win-win a approach to WAVAS. Against this uh, backdrop, I want to share three observations. First, universal secondary education is still a, a distant dream for many of the DMCs. It is a learning a priority for the education sector, but also a very essential factor for the integrated rural development. 
where enrollment in secondary education in rural areas in approaching, is approaching the universal level in many of the DMCs, uh, but it's still far behind in uh, rural areas. So uh, as a result, rural areas, I think, are more likely to benefit from the online open secondary education programs, as this will reduce the different types of the barriers to universalizing uh, secondary education. Second, uh, digital technology is already affecting the uh, transforming uh, many of the areas of the society and also closely connected with our life and also industry structure. The proposed uh, open online learning system will lead to more investments in education institutes that will help neutral future talents with a digital competency to contribute to broader prosperity of our DMCs. Third, I also want to highlight the importance of the cross sector collaboration in developing human capital in various uh, priority sectors, including rural development and also digital transformation. That will be a very critical for sustainable development. I hope the webinar today will generate a lot of discussions and also identify ways for greater cost sector collaborations. Again, today, the webinar proposed to work together is type of alternative but complementary system of the open online secondary education system in DMCs. It will provide good opportunities or for one of the teenagers who cannot continue their studies, particularly for those in the rural areas. Such a system will not only help everyone to complete the secondary education, but also learn new skills and also the knowledge necessary to assure for them. The cases from the Republic of the Korea and also Philippines today presented where provide the promising examples of, for DMSs. With these uh, practical case studies, I believe our uh, developing member countries can learn and also develop their own policies to accelerate the pace of uh, uh, universalizing secondary education to enhance economic opportunities for the youth with a special focus on the rural and also remote areas. So with these uh, observations, I will encourage one of the participants uh, to actively uh, you know, listen the lessons from the South Korea and also Philippines, and also actively attend the discussions today. So thank you and enjoy the webinar today. Back to you, Miko. Thank you. Thank you, Jingpang. Thank you so much for your insightful and encouraging remarks. Yes, indeed, uh, the education, uh, secondary education enrollment is really important, uh, as well as education sector and other sector also. So as you mentioned, the, the discrepancy between uh, this discrepancy uh, enrollment between the uh, urban, urban and rural area is very big. Some some countries twenty or thirty percent, and then our rural area, and then girls' education, and the lower income family student background students are left uh, be are excluded from the edu uh, secondary education. So um, the secondary education uh, providing the secondary education uh, opportunity for all is. It's not an education sector matter. The whole city and whole society, and there's a main main route for we are maintain achieve the social equity issues. Yes, thank you so much. And now we will listen to recent stories from Korea and Philippines. For Korea cases, uh, Dr. Hwang Eunhee Hwang will present us about open secondary school policy in Korea. She is a senior researcher on KD and Director of Center for Open, Middle, and High Schools. And the floor is yours. Uh, for the time management, uh, uh, please allow me to interrupt you uh, after 10 minutes, and then you can wrap up for, for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ting. Good afternoon and good morning. It is a big honor for me to be here today. Now I am 
percent of occupants country school income here. Contents are follows. First, I will tell you about brief history of open secondary school. To help you understand, I will tell, I will explain the circumstances of Korea in Japan, related education policies too. In the early 1970s, Korea faced the problem of, uh, of student overflow. The government prepared alternatives such as GED and the establishment of higher civic and high technical schools. However, more than 600,000 students were still left unattended and entered the workforce without sufficient education. Open high school was established to accommodate such student overflow and to reduce trained and skilled workforce. In 1972, the government officially proposed the establishment of open high school and a legal foundation for establishing open high school was stated in the Education Act in 1973. Teddy conducted a study to prepare for establishment of school in 1973 too. Finally, 11 schools were established in 1974. In, in the late 1970s, the demand for higher education and university entrance competition increased rapidly in Korea. In this vein, the seven-story education reform was implemented to realize democracy, justice, and welfare. Through these reforms, lifelong, uh, lifelong education was emphasized and open secondary school was expanded. Since the mid-1990s, internet service has been established in school with the development of information and communication technology. In 1997, a computer-based education system was piloted in open high school, and in 2008, an online learning platform was launched. Sorry. Since the 2000s, the age composition of learners at open high school has changed. From 1970 to 1995, most students were in their late teens and early 20s. But from 1995, the elderly formed the majority. In 2013, open middle school was established for the elderly who did not acquire a secondary school education. With the launch of the cyber education system in 2008, open high school became the only public school to sub online contents that follows the national curriculum. With these online contents, students who can attend school because of various reasons uh, can get education. This school for student athletes allows students to make up for their missed class due to com uh, competitions. Uh, online class allows transferred students to fulfill their credit they, that are unprovided in a new school. School for you. A uh, program is ensure that learning of students with health disability, disabilities who have to be absent for a long time due to illness. In addition, in 2020, when school closed due to COVID-19, online contents was also provided for regular middle and high school students. Next, I will tell you some remarkable features of open secondary schools. Open secondary school provides education for all ages. Anyone qualified to enter middle or high school is given an equal opportunity to learn in open secondary school regardless of age. This diversity of student age is shown in statistics on uh, student composition. As of 2022, 6.5% of open middle school students are 60s. In case of high school, 7.6% of students are over the 50s, and 11.5% were teenage students. The ratio of teenage students in open high school reflects the changing demand and expectation for open high school, open high school students. Open secondary school provides an educational ladder for students. 
Open Secondary School has allowed students to further their studies in higher education institutions. In 2021, around 38% graduate students enter high, high, higher education institutions compared to the university admission, admission rate, it might seem insignificant, but we should consider the ratio of elderly students in open uh, secondary school. Open secondary school provide blended learning experience to students. In addition to online classes, students should attend face-to-face -face class twice a week. We also operate a cognition of prior learning, which award academic credit to students' prior learning experience through the validation process. There are also various customized education programs, such as tutoring programs and career programs, which are based on students' demands. Um, next, I will tell, I will explain some implication of open secondary school. When establishing a school like open secondary school, you should think about the form of establishment. In case of Korea, all schools are established as affiliated schools. Uh, there are some advantages. There are some advantages. First, it is easy to use resources uh, from the main school. Second, open high school and open middle school are mostly established in pre-teach classes schools in Korea, so students can have provide as a graduate of pre-teach schools. Finally, autonomy in school operation can be secured as it based on the rule developed based on the province. However, there are also disadvantages as follows. First, if the teacher who currently serve at affiliated and main school can suffer from heavy workload. Second, since the uh, school is operated with teacher from the main school, affiliated school should follow the curriculum of main school. Lastly, regional difference may occur among schools. Conversely, if the school is established in an independent form, various curriculum of the school can be operated. For example, uh, the school can simultaneously operate a two-track curriculum for adult and uh, school-age students. In addition, because of centralization, it can be unified. On the other hand, a substantial initial investment is required as it may not be easy to attract new students due to its unfamiliarity. To establish an online-based school, digital learning system is necessary. UNESCO proposed the four perspectives, technological aspect, contents aspect, pedagogical aspect, and monitoring and evaluation aspects. Open secondary school is learning, various training programs to personal readiness for digital learning, which lead to the successful operation of online learning system. First, ICT support program is offered to first year students. Diagnostic test for ICT competency is conducted and on-site ICT support program is provided to students. In addition, technical support and resources are available on the website. There are also various, various training programs for uh, open secondary school teachers. Workshops are given to teachers at the beginning of school year to enhance their understanding of open secondary school and online teaching strategies. Lastly, workshops for the future education are also held so teachers can prepare for education environment like metaverse. The workshop provides seminars on Metaverse and EduTech and practicing tra uh, training sessions using AR for year contents. We try to provide teacher training programs continuously to prepare educator, educators to use digital technology in education. As mentioned earlier, 
efforts must be made to implement rapidly developing technology in education to operate online based schools successfully. Many of you many of you must be familiar Dr. with the keywords. Dr. Huang, you have uh, four minutes left. Oh, okay. Many of you must be familiar with the keywords on the screen, AI, adaptive learning, and big data. In, in the online system, learners, uh, learners leave various data trails, assessment tasks, uh, et cetera, according effort to provide customized instruction for learners um, are being actively made using this data. Currently, KD is conducting research um, to provide customized feedback to open secondary school. Uh, open secondary school students uh, by predicting learners' academic achievements uh, and learning participation based on the based on machine learning. In this day, when operating an online-based school, it is necessary to read the latest, latest technology trend and continue to think about how to apply this up-to-date technology in education. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the informative, this informative and comprehensive, uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, we we were we are surprised that Korea has started this program online, uh, online open, open secondary program from since 1974, 74 years, 74, and that actually the uh, Korea Korea achieved the second universal secondary education 1985 is really. Uh, very early, it is very big achievement because at the time the Koreans, uh, Koreans um, GDP cap per capita is uh, on, uh, less than two thousand five hundred. So we can we can imagine the Korean government's enthusiasm to provide the equitable equitable education access. And then this open uh, open open secondary education program contribute to the maker consensus. Uh, society in society to achieve the uh, universe, universal secondary education. And then we know that, that the secondary education, achieving the secondary education can be the basis for the jump up the industrial development. Thank you so much. And then the, the characteristic of Korean system is well organized, uh, combined with the public education system. And then they are connected with a higher level of education. So some students, 20, uh, 30, uh, 30 of students uh, entering higher, uh, higher education is very uh, big implication so uh, it, it 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 gives the implication that everyone can study continue can, can study higher education if they study hard and take time so thank you so much for sharing for good good uh cases we can hear uh later with a question and answer okay and then i would like to introduce our second presenter Heather. Uh, Benny, Benny Guno Beltran, who will introduce uh, who into the Philippines alternative learning system. He's uh, executive, he's a father of a uh, Catholic church also, and he's the executive director of Sandy One Center for Learning. So preparing this webinar, I had a brief a brief uh, discussion about the content uh, about the content, and then I was very impressed about Philippine Department of Education's enthusiasm for uh, this alternative program, and then the uh, further veterans' innovative mind and their uh, dedication for supporting out of school student, out of school youth youth development and job employment. Okay, mm. the COVID situation definitely uh, seems to expedite the digitalization of this program, and they developed a very valuable system. So, Dr. Dr. Uh, Father Veteran, the floor is yours. Ms. Vance, please uh, start the slides now. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm Father Benigno Beltran. I'm uh, concentrating 
on the out of school youth in the Philippines, we are 110 million. Youth 15 to 29 years old, 6 million did not finish high school. Just the youth, we are not even thinking of older than 29. Okay. So out of 100 kids in the Philippines who enroll in school, kindergarten, only 40% will finish high school. Only 10% will finish college. So there's the 60% that have not finished high school and we are focusing on the 15 to 29 years old. After COVID, I think there are 10 to 12 million now, nobody can count. So we would like to reinvigorate the motivation of students to learn because it's not enough to provide online open secondary education. Our goal is a holistic digital and experience-based learning environment digital learning for digital natives. So you have to provide not only online open secondary education opportunities, but you have to provide them with lessons that will also engage them. I was invited to the World uh, Education Summit in 2015 in Seoul, Korea, and the president in the introduction said that the almost miraculous growth of Korea can be attributed to education, especially to the parents who told their kids when they go to school, you all seem he gongbo heira, study with fire in your hearts. So we are also, there's also a fire in our hearts. We would like to provide lessons that will engage these digital natives. Next, please. So we were uh, number 79 out of 79 countries in, in reading, and we were number 78 out of 79 countries in science and mathematics. When uh, in 2018, the program for international student assessment of 15 year old students was done. So a very dismal performance. Next please. And now because of COVID, but even before COVID, Many young people were experiencing emotional distress because they are on social media eight to 10 hours a day, according to the survey. So now the University of the Philippines Institute of Population Studies came out with a study that 7.5% of young Filipinos have thoughts of suicide. They do not even know what to do with their life. Next, please. And so, we innovated with the convergence theory of learning. Well, I will explain that later on. The, the theory believes that education should teach, should teach students how to become better human beings in a very volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. It's a VUCA situation in the fourth industrial revolution with AI and blockchain and robotics and internet of things. So we would like them to thrive in that uncertain world. Next, please. So we are doing this in partnership with uh, the Department of Education, especially the ALS. The ALS is the alternative learning system, especially really for open secondary education. We would like to thank Assistant Secretary Ambat for her support of our project. Next, please. So we would like to give the kids values in the end. First, solidarity, then integrity, and then creativity. Because these are the values needed in an uncertain world. Now we're into Einstein, after Einstein, and then there's quantum physics. Changes are very fast. The brains of the young cannot keep up with the fast changes. Education should teach them connectivity, self-actualization, integrity, and design thinking, especially. Next, please. So the input would be motivation, metacognition, multimodal mentoring, not only instruction. And then the process 
would be enhancing systems thinking, critical thinking, and design thinking, and the objective would be integrity, solidarity, and creativity. We would like this theory of cognition based on embodied cognition in philosophy to integrate learning objectives, learning activities, and learning assessments so that we can really prepare the kids for the fourth industrial revolution. I think Korea is even going into the fifth now. Next, please. So our points of action, we are now almost finished with digitizing the ALS curriculum. And then we have given training to the ALS teachers, 200 of them. And then the ALS students, right now, our digitized modules are uh, piloted with 600 students, not only in Manila, but also in the South, where the people are very poor. And then now our structure, the delivery system, I was not able to include it here. We have a 3D, DIWA, it's called DIWA Learning Experience Platform. No longer just an LMS. An LMS is just 2D. It is designed to manage content based pedagogies. Ours is project based. Ours is integrated with Minecraft. Ours is integrated with the Khan Academy and other OAR resources. Next, please. So I would like to show you, I hope it will come out, a sample of our digitized ALS modules. Okay, you see the animation of the cell it comes out and then it expands and then the kids click on the, the mitochondria and the aureoles or whatever. And then it will also with very nice music. And then this is uh, the kids just uh, change swipe and then the pages will change. Next please. So we also found that the kids, especially after COVID, were suffering from emotional distress. So we are also, we were granted a, uh, funds by the, De the Development Academy of the Philippines to produce 20 modules on social and emotional learning. Because if the fire in their hearts die, they could not uh, learn or they could not study with fire in their hearts. So first we teach them self-awareness, then self management social awareness, relationship skills, and then responsible decision-making so that they will become mature human beings. And we are using animation and virtual and uh, augmented reality, even songs, something like that, so that the kids will really be engaged because some teachers say they are, uh, suffering from attention deficit syndrome. It's not true because they play video games until two o'clock in the morning. So if you take away their emotional distress because many of them are connected in social media, but they are alone. Very few of them can talk about their problems to people that they can trust. They do not trust social media because you will be bashed there, you will be bullied there. You know. So very important for us, social and emotional learning as online, as part of our online open secondary education. Next, please. Father Beltran, uh, you have five minutes left. Okay. So we are also partnering with IBM Skills Build. Uh, they are only, they, they garnered budgets already and the certificate, and we are going to meet so that they can get jobs, even if they are only in junior high school, and then that will serve as an online uh, uh, on the job training. It's modular. They do not have to go to college anymore. They can get jobs. Then after one or two years, they get more certificates until they can arrive at the, the equivalent of an IT engineer. We are also partnering with Microsoft and Microsoft is giving us free lessons certified also by the industry in 
PowerPoint, Word, Excel, and IBM skills build has lessons in data analytics, cybersecurity, IT administration, AI, and the kids, they do not know how to read from books, but they got badges and certificates without any orientation, without any introduction at all, because they are digital natives. And the IBM people asked them, how were you able to do it? He said, oh, we downloaded from YouTube. Next, please. So we are building a, the school for the fourth industrial revolution. It will have uh, uh, internet-based blackboards, you know, interactive words, and we will have, uh, we're looking for donations of 20 virtual reality equipment because we have lessons using virtual reality. Our kids, once it is finished, can dissect the human heart using only the VR equipment. And we are using augmented reality also. It will take too long to show it here, but uh, the, our kids work until uh, two o'clock in the morning also because we are motivating them. They study with fire in their hearts. They could uh, hope for a job. And uh, of course, I give them new tablets and I will. I promise to take them back if they will not gain budgets and certificates. So our, our, we tell the kids, Yul Simhi, Gongbo, Heira, and they obey it because they are digital natives. And we provide lessons that is in accord with how their brains are connected. Next, please. So we are also doing this so that they, we could produce food. We could teach them how to produce food in the urban centers. Next, please. So this is uh, the state of our school. The computer room is almost finished. And uh, that's the background. It's uh, really a slum area at the back. We have a long way to go, but uh, we started with engaging lessons using fourth industrial revolution tools so that we could engage digital natives. Next, please. So this is one of our graduates. I just visited her a few days ago. She dropped out, then took our course, passed the accreditation and equivalency exam of the Department of Education, continued into college, graduated Bachelor of Science in hotel and restaurant management. Now she has a very nice job. She would have gotten married at uh, 17 if we, do not, if we did not give her online open secondary education possibilities. Next, please. So we are looking for project partners so that uh, we could finish. And our dream, our vision in line with the sustainable development gain, uh, goals of the United Nations, 10 million out of school youth provided with online open secondary education so that they will have alternative learning pathways instead of just the formal school and they, we can expand access and improve quality of education. Hamsa Hamida. Thank you, Dr. Doc, thank you, Father Feltran. Uh, we are overwhelmed your uh, ambitions and confidence to you can change our uh, youth's uh, future. Yes, uh, we are really uh, interested. Uh, we are very, <clears throat> we listened to very uh, encouraging uh, cases from Philippines. So uh usually we think that on through online education it is difficult to teach 21st century skills like a convergence thinking and critical thinking and communicate uh, communication skill and collaboration project basis learning and it's difficult to uh, teach uh, emotional emotional thinking uh, but uh, you you have an ambition to through online through online you can do and you can do better the, you can do better. So I think your program can be a very uh, good research topic. We have to look, <laughs> you have to look, uh, you have to study more and then the, get the evidence. So uh, as I was, uh, I was really uh, imp impressed by your uh, topics and then programs. Uh, 
uh, you provided uh, through you provide you provide the technical and the Tibet program also through your uh, platform. So and then I hope you can get uh, uh, additional funds. You can get additional funds and then to establish a higher high school program and then to give more chance to more students, more uh, out of school youth. And as you mentioned that if we govern, if a country has this kind of online platform, so it can use to be for public school teachers and students who attend public school, uh, public school, who attend public school. Actually in Korea also in pen during the pandemic, uh, teachers and uh, students use the online, online open higher education materials. They are well organized and then the quality is very high. So it can have, uh, even, even if we started from, we started uh, from the informal education sector, it, we can have the, the formal education sector too. So we can find a very, very potential, potential aspect of, aspect of open high school, open secondary school program. Thank you so much. Yes, and uh, now I would like to listen our expert thoughts and recommendation on this. And uh, we will share. They will share. Uh, we will invite uh, ADB uh, ADB's experts. They will share their project related uh, uh, related with out of school use or digital technology and online learning and so on. And we can learn what's going on in ADB's project and then. The, we can think about this issue from other perspectives. So yes, the first panelist is Yuni Jung, and she's a senior digital technology specialist in digital technology development unit. Yuni, the floor is yours. Thank you, Miguel, and thank you so much for this opportunity to join and listen to a really inspiring case studies. Um, I'm from Digital Technology for Development Unit of ADB, and I'd like to share a few observations to, to contribute to the discussion from vantage point of the digital sector and digital economy. The degree programs, um, even in a rapidly digitalizing world, still matter because alternative learning and career pathways for people without diploma are still too complicated uh, for individuals to navigate. And the reality of the job market is that even in the digital sector, educational attainment is still a key metric used for gauging knowledge and skills, especially for higher paying, uh, higher paying jobs. So I'd like to highlight three points, again, to, to contribute to the discussion. Um, and I'm not an educational uh, specialist, but I have been in the digital sector for some time and hope, they, um, uh, hope they're useful for, uh, for the education team as well as for the attendees. And these three points are around quality, uh, lifelong learning, and the role of government. The so first, um, the Online secondary school um, is a great way to create a quality program that's more agile and responsive to the emerging needs uh, around 21st century skills or industrial revolution 4.0 skills. Um, I think I'm in the presence of the lead author of, of a recently published uh, ADB's report on uh, IR 4.0 skills. Um, and it also speaks to this point. Um, the existing uh, traditional uh, system of curricular design, development, approval, and dissemination are pretty linear and takes time, uh, while online programs um, such as online high school has the potential to deliver the cutting edge and market responsive curricula fast and, and widely. And the example that Miguel mentioned uh, of, of uh, teachers using the online high school curriculum to flip the classroom or use, um, use it as a complementary material is definitely a model worth considering for countries that lack the pool of quality teachers or just in the process of developing the pool. Second, um, online degree programs can also pave the way to instill the discipline of lifelong learning that is required in the digital world. Uh, Peter Drucker once said that the only skill that will be important in the 21st century is the skill of learning new skills. Everything else will become obsolete over time. And we live in a world where technology change and evolve at an accelerated pace. And uh, as, as uh, 
Father uh, Venny mentioned, there are opportunities from digital giants such as Microsoft and Google's traditional from Cisco for anybody to, to um, enroll and register in certificate programs and upskill and reskill and develop and advance their career opportunities in the digital sector. However, to succeed in the, IR, um, in the digital economy and IR 4.0 world, where sectors and national boundaries are blurring, it's really the soft skills, such as the problem solving, communications, adaptability, and emotional agility that are really important to succeed. And these skills need to be honed from early age, from early on, so through early um, and secondary uh, education. Therefore, uh, to prepare the youth to properly uh, to properly face and respond to um, to the changing world and the challenges. So, with that, I'd like to highlight a couple roles uh, that only governments can play to build inclusive uh, labor markets in the digital economy. So, while um, IR 4.0 promises to bring about greater productivity and wealth, it also can easily exacerbate existing vulnerabilities among labor market participants, especially, um, especially those with, um, with uh, less of, uh, those uh, who haven't had the opportunity to, to learn and obtain, um, uh, obtain the, the right skills. And in DMCs, the labor markets have traditionally excluded women, the young and the rural workers or the dropouts from the bottom of the socioeconomic segments um, that this webinar focuses on. So having a, an online program that targets most vulnerable or at-risk uh, youth is critical, but it's not enough. And there are other areas where government uh, has to play a role to make programs like this work. First is filling the digital connectivity gaps. Um, you know, with uh, and expanding access and affordability of devices and broadband, so that so that uh, people um, ubiquitously have an opportunity to attain uh, the educational opportunities. And while the private sector leads an investment, the last mile and then the lower end of socioeconomic spectrum are still left under or unconnected uh, in many parts of Asia. Second is ensuring the students' digital rights and well-beings to make sure that they are well protected from privacy and cybersecurity perspective you, and ensuring safe. Chris, you have oh. one or two minutes. I think yep, I spent three minutes. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, almost done. Yep. Um, so and ensuring safe internet environment that prevents cyberbullying and promotes students' well-being, uh, uh, digital well-being um, is also very critical, um, uh, critical role that government can play. Lastly, um, investment, <laughs> you know, from connecting schools and uh, providing devices, upgrading curricular and training of teachers of digital competencies, competencies. there are a host of things that the government can do and, um, and a player like ADB can do. And ADB has, in fact, invested steadily uh, in digital education. But when you look at the stats of the uh, ADB uh, projects with digital components, um, it, I was uh, surprised to, to see that it stands at 7% out of the 646 digital projects uh, of ADB um, that we identified between 2010 and 2011. And I know this, uh, this figure is rising, but then um, what, it, uh, what it shows is that there's still more latent opportunities to reap the benefits of digital technologies. Uh, especially in the education sector. So I'm once again thankful for the opportunity to share my perspective and hope to continue the dialogue with the education team as well as the partners present in this webinar. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuni. Thank you so much from the, the your analysis and your thoughts on the school, uh, school education from uh, uh, in terms of education whole digital technology perspective. Yes, uh, you mentioned you, I think you are, your comment is aligned with uh, Dr. Uh, Father Benton. You can teach, we can teach uh, uh, our 21st century uh, skills and then the, uh, digital resilience or all kinds of uh, competency we need to teach students through this, uh, through online or the 
through, through new technology. So we have to develop a more educationalized way to support students to learn better. And then you come, you analyze the, the ADB's project on education. So when you, you, you mentioned that you ADB and government need to expand the investment for education. So as I think it's a very good implication. So when we think about the a place we, uh, government invest. So schools can be the first, I hope school can be the first priority and the young generation can be the be uh, first beneficiary of the investment. Thank you so much. And we will listen uh, We will listen uh, later more. So, and then the, our second, I, will, uh, I would like to invite the second panelist. The second panelist is Ji Kang Lee. And he's a senior social sector specialist in South Asia Regional Development. He's managing various projects from K to 12 to Tibet. And recently his research, uh, he uh, studied about uh, how to support out of school, uh, uh, how, how to support pandemic uh, through online education. Thank you. Floor is yours, Jigang. Thank you so much, uh, Mikong. And I hope you can hear me well. So. Uh, First, I, I'd like to apologize that uh, I don't think I'm in a position to make recommendations uh, for this because I, the two presenters, they are the real experts in this area. I have uh, done a little bit of work, but comparing with theirs, mine is uh, very small. So I have more questions than uh, recommendations. So let me just say a little bit of thing of what I have done. So uh, in Bangladesh, uh, they are similar to Philippines. There are a lot of uh, out of school children and uh, the teaching of out of school children is only in this uh, in person in the learning centers following the traditional uh, curriculum for non formal education so uh, in the past uh, several years uh, we did some small small experiments in which we provide the uh, education tablets uh, to out of school children and, and supplemented by the tutoring so that's what we did and uh, our scale is was very small it's only like uh, 450 500 students we, uh, our, we did a, a, reg, a regular assessment uh, impact evaluation. We found that the impact of this very simple intervention was very significant uh, on these uh, out of school children. So that uh, shows that, that that it's promising. The question is how to scale it up. So when we scale it up, we, it's not just the equipment and the content, but also the whole uh, ecosystem. So I, I was uh, very uh, happy and very excited to see the presentations, which show that. Uh, the scaled up uh, the system in uh, Korea uh, for more than 20 and 30 years. And then in, in Philippines, already uh, some uh, mature and uh, very uh, comprehensive model is being developed. So uh, I think uh, other countries, developing member countries, uh, can learn a lot from these two. So just one, uh, I would say one recommendation and just uh, mention several of the questions I have in mind. So one recommendation is that for other developing member countries to learn from the experience of Korea and Philippines, we, we need some uh, very structured and systematic uh, 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 summarizing the experience and uh, difficulties and the challenges uh, in the experience of, uh, for example, Korea over the past 20, 30 years, uh, what are the necessary uh, policy or other design that's needed to implement or establish uh, this uh, scaled up uh, system for online education? I think that kind of experience uh, is very much needed by other developing member countries. And also related to this, I think uh, assessment on this uh, effectiveness of this online learning it is very much needed. Uh, we, we know that it has been very successful according to the presentation of uh, both, but uh, we, we want to know more. Uh, for example, uh, the questions I have for the Korea, in 20 years ago, maybe uh, more than uh, more than 600,000 uh, people take this uh, online education, but now only less than 5,000 people are taking. So why it's shrinking? If it's uh, so effective, why it's not uh, expanded? Uh, so that's one question I have. My last question I have is on the Minecraft. So Minecraft is, uh, as mentioned by Father Ben, is so popular and uh, my, my kids is playing with it all the time. I was very worried. I was very happy to hear that Minecraft can actually be used for the teaching and learning purpose. If this 
can be turned into a learning uh, learning like uh, instrument. This will be extremely impactful for the uh, uh, kids of other countries because uh, this is something they will be interested in. So I for, so I'm very interested to to see how this uh, kind of uh, a new uh, digital uh, interven inventions can be used for education and what kind of a system design it can be used for education purpose. So a lot of things we will learn in the future. Thank you so much for the two brilliant uh, presentations. Thank you, Zigang. Thank you. Th <laughs> thank you for sharing your study and your questions. Uh, the, yeah, your questions about uh, uh, the effectiveness of the this investment for the this uh, offline uh, online high school online secondary education, and then the, how the uh, how we can make effective we we call it a game 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 gamification kind of thing how to game using game for the education so we will listen after we uh, since comment and then uh, he he commented about uh, uh, we need a monitor uh, it's uh, we came to know that many countries have their online online supporting program in in informal education area but uh, still not connected with the credential or certificate uh, certificate of courses and it's not completed yet so we can we can think about uh, how to develop the, each country's system to more uh, more supportive way a supportive way for students thank you Jigang again and then the, our last panelist is Xin Long. Yes, she is a senior social uh, senior social senior social sector specialist in Central West Regional Department. She will share uh, the, about this program, informal education program from the social sector uh, perspective. Thank you. Floor is yours, Sin. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for the opportunity uh, joining this seminar and uh, serve as a discussant. Uh, I would like to say that, uh, yeah, you know, what uh, I have been doing so far with uh, Pakistan is uh, from the demand side, like to support the uh, improvement of accessibility, as well as trying also from the uh, M&E monitoring, monitoring aspect to strengthen the uh, students' continuity and uh, <clears throat> learning uh learning result like from the from uh when they are absorbed like in the social protection schemes to support their education um yeah i noticed that you know our this uh, our panelists uh, were uh you know our, our our speakers were sorry our guests were talking about more like from the uh, you know, teaching and learning aspect as well as uh, the supply side and quality side. I'm not able to, you know, like touch these aspects, just like talking about some experience from the demand side uh, for the um, children and families from the um, poor uh, background. So in Pakistan, like uh, there are around 20 million out of school children from age five to 16 years. Um, most of them, you know, uh, could not even complete the primary education. Then the uh, enrollment to secondary education is even, you know, restricted, especially for girls. Um, the government runs the social nationwide social protection scheme, trying to support the uh, poor families' children to access primary school. And then under the ADB's result <clears throat> lending approved in the end of last year, the government has been able to expand this program also to the secondary education. Um, so with such uh, expansion, it shares, it requires a lot on the monitoring and evaluation to see whether those beneficiary children could really continue at school as well as complete school. Um, so we have a component on the improving the M&E uh, system. Uh, for the social protection uh, schemes. Uh, this is not handled under the education departments across the country, but through this social protection agency. Um, hence, it is from the demand side. Uh, why we are handling this from the social protection agency, but not the education department is because under the social protection agency, there is the um, uh, individualized 
uh, like student ID linked to the parents, beneficiary, you know, a household's parents whose ID, you know, could be supported by the national system. But in the um, education department, they could not do so. Uh, so far, the education uh, monitoring system could not be individualized. Like there is no data being a, uh, you know, on the student per se. So we are trying to, you know, strengthen this monitoring system through using this individualized student, uh, you know, ID to follow up uh, from their registry to the uh, social protection scheme to the, their, you know, um, progress at the school grades until their completion of school and uh, going up from primary school to secondary school, if they are continuing as beneficiaries. So this uh, is one aspect we would like to see, you know, like uh, with the cash transfer to the poor families, how the children are encouraged like to stick to school and continuing their study and growing up to secondary education. Um, so this is one aspect that we are uh, strengthening M and E aspect to enhancing the accessibility and uh, uh, results. And pro the program provides the tablets to the compliance monitors hired, like uh, who are working from the field and who are surveying at the schools from time to time, and also, you know, to support the E. Uh, e-system, e you know, for the monitoring uh, through this social protection agency. And meanwhile, we are doing a study to link, to compare the current education department system with this social protection agency system to see, you know, like in future, how to improve also the education department side uh, system, like if ADB would be able to pursue any supply side support uh, for the education sector. Another aspect is, as what uh, um, Ming Kim mentioned, is this informal education. This is also piloted in this uh, social protection scheme uh, at primary education level. Uh, so this is the first time for the uh, social protection scheme to go to informal education. So however, this implementation of the informal education is at formal schools. That is uh, what we are piloting through uh, choosing the, selecting the provinces where equivalence learning policy is already issued and adopted by the government. And uh, there are forces like, uh, you know, implementing such um, accelerated learning programs through different impl uh, implementers like NGO running schools or even, you know, uh, community running like programs as well as public school running programs. So, so this um, M&E system will also be applied you know, to this informal education part under the program and monitoring the overaged out of school children's enrollment and continuity at this equivalence learning program and their graduation. Under the equivalence learning uh, policy, uh, there is the certificate to be issued on the uh, students who successfully complete this accelerated learning program. So we expect that under this pilot, like more overaged out of school children could be attracted to coming back to education program and you know uh, achieve the uh, goal of completing at least the primary school so that they can also be able to be absorbed to the secondary uh, education. Now this social protection scheme also cover. So this is um, um, a linkage service. Now uh, we are trying to promote for the overaged out of school children. Um, so what, what, what I discuss is mostly from the M&E aspect, how to strengthen that based on uh, being able to track individual students and following up through their school performance. That is mostly needed in a lot of developing countries where the education sector's monitoring system could not reach this step. But through this uh, uh, cash in incentive uh, linked program, you know, this must be individualized. And then we can try to see, you know, how this uh, individualized, uh, you know, 
uh, system could really contribute you know, to the students' incentive for them to move ahead. Yeah, thank you. I'll stop here. Um, but more to learn from our uh, two guests about their experience. Thank you. Thank you, Xin. Thank you so much for your co uh, the comment uh, and uh, uh, expectation from the social sector uh, uh, and demand 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 side uh, perspective. Actually, yes, you mentioned about the importance of the monitoring of student learning and then project at the uh, to to. To support well, we need some trajectory and structures function, and then all of these function. It is it was really difficult, but through the digital technology, it is. Uh, if we have a well, a well, well organized, well, uh, well, well organized system, it is easy. Uh, Easily support students and then rec uh, recognize recognize them the left behind the student and then the support them in the right time. So uh, with better you uh, uh, using this system and then you mentioned that the, you are starting from the social sector programs, not uh, in the education sector, but in 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 other countries also the to starting the education public sector uh setting is sometimes it's difficult to start new in innovative uh a try so uh, after in in any project we are making a good example and then share and then uh expand 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 the good example to the public education and then it can be a big contribution for public education too but thank you so much and then uh dear audience please uh please if you have a question, please, uh, you can uh, write your answer, uh, questions on the Q and A box, and or you can turn on your computer, uh, turn on your camera, and the uh, speak, uh, ask in person. So, and then uh, before we go to the question, I will. I would like to ask. Uh, okay, I have one question. Is uh, is this? Is this like is they helping high school drop out and they decided to come back to school when they are older? Mm. Okay, so uh, Dr. Huang is typing an answer. So, uh, the Jigang, please, uh, please uh, write your questions and then raise your hand. And before we start listening to the audience, the Jigang asked about the uh, uh, the cost effectiveness of this program is uh, in, in case of Korea that still right now is that not many students seem to use this system and then uh, how do you think uh, doc, I would like to ask Dr. Wang how do you think about the effectiveness of this system and it, it is still a uh, good reason to get the government funding and then to the father Bantran and the uh, Jigang asked about the uh, how, how's the effectiveness of the using game for education? Please share your story a little bit more. So, Dr. Wang, can you answer? And then you can you can answer the our first quest, first question from the guest also. Uh, uh, I will answer the first question. Uh, in case of GED is uh, just kind of a test uh, to get diploma. But our secondary school provides the uh, school experience and uh, national curriculum uh, to students who can get entered the school. So I think it's a uh, different. And then um, Miguel, sorry, but I I'm, 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 uh, can understand your uh, question. Can you explain me more? Ah, yes. The uh, Jigang asked that uh, as your uh, presentation slide, the student yes, yes. Uh, registered in Korean system is mm -hmm. not high. So 2000 or less than. So, so it's uh, two. Yeah, I can, I can yes. ask, I can, re I can repeat. Uh, I'm just typing my questions in the chat box, but I can repeat. It's okay. It's, yeah. Yes, so, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so for Korea, uh, at the beginning, a huge number of uh, students uh, were involved in enrolled in the online secondary education. I think uh, the number is more than 600,000. But but now I think the number is less than 5,000. But I know that the, the program is very successful. 
in like uh, uh, yes. they continue okay, the guess. education. But the question is why it has not been expanded? Is it because it's too expensive or is it because uh, the quality okay. is not mm. as good as the uh, traditional education? Mm. So that's my, uh, yeah, that's my question. And the second, I think uh, I, maybe I can add one question uh, related to the presentation by the Father Ben. Uh, the social emotional is very important, right? Especially when the kids are learning online because there's no in-person interactions. So how to address this uh, in the online education? This is also a very common question we receive from the, uh, our clients. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in 1970s, there are um, many students who can go to the school because of financial issues. So at first we start 11th course in 1974, but after that, uh, it increased to 50 schools. So many people can get education from open secondary school. And nowadays, um, most people in Korea can get education. So uh, the need uh, for open secondary school is decreasing. Uh, so, and so we try to observe the teenagers Drop out, drop out teenagers nowadays. And we are trying to change the program uh, uh, at, uh, for teenagers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Yes. And the social emotional, uh, could you add something? Is there anything that's done to, 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 to uh, strengthen the social emotional education for the children using the online education? Mm -hmm. Dr. Beltran, can you answer first? Yes. Okay, as I explained, we have 20 modules structured according to the convergence theory of learning that will provide secondary education students with social and emotional learning skills like self-awareness, self-regulation, social awareness, social responsibility, and responsible decision-making. It's being done. It's, uh, it's being piloted now. Never done before. The, I have never heard of uh, an online uh, SEL program, but we have to do it because especially after the pandemic, it's still going on. Kids are emotionally distressed. And that's why the Department of Education in the Philippines directed every teacher, everyone in the education department to study <clears throat> how to provide psychosocial learning for the kids. Okay, but my, uh, my main answer really is you could not provide ACL online, you could not uh, provide science, uh, uh, mathematics without changing your method of teaching, without changing the way you understand what learning is. And that's why we use the convergence theory of learning because in the convergence theory of learning, the affective dimension, because we are based on, based on brain research. Brain research shows that most of our values are already embedded in the amygdala and in the limbic region of the brain. If you do not take that into consideration, you are not being realistic. That's part of our being human. We are affective creatures. We are cognitive creatures. Uh, we are even social creatures. We also dream. So all that should converge into a learning theory that will provide content and really enhance the learning. That's, that's its design that way. So games would be the, the same also. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Father Veltran. So you mean that you provided that, that module for uh, take care of student emotional uh, emotional uh, competency. And then do you do you think it is uh, is this effective through the through online online module? We can teach, we can confidently teach this kind of competency. Yeah, the best would really be blended learning. That's the ideal. But since 
there's a new variant XBB over COVID-19 or whatever, we are preparing that the SEL can be taught purely online. Through mentoring, we, we also have mentors. Uh, it would take a long time, but it's not only the teachers that, uh, and then we have AI to monitor the students whether their answers are correct. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for your answer. And then using, uh, it, it comes on AI and then other data, data accumulation. So with through that the data, so you, we can find the better way to support and then help a student in struggling. And then uh, uh, Philip, uh, Dr. Pet, uh, Beltran, I think that we can teach, we can teach confidently this kind of uh, uh, competency, and then we can continuously develop. So, and then in some cases, we there is no option with this uh, with this methodology. So, I think we we uh, uh, based on the evidence, we have to de uh, develop more. Uh, recent uh, develop more uh, effective methodology and then the, we have a question about uh, this digital learning platform uh, can support the competency skills and i think it is related with uh, the pre uh, our question so if we if digital learning platform can support the com uh, emotional learning and you, the competence based uh, um, competence based uh, a student co competency is like a 21st century uh, competency. So uh, you use you you have it, you witness that the students are developing that competency, and then uh, as I said, you are a uh, result or at, uh, can be more accumulated and studied and then published and shared with other country. And then the uni. Uh, Dr. Huang, you, I remember your last slide that your new trend is uh, using AI and uh, data science database. You are, you, uh, you, with the older uh, accumulated data, you are trying to find a uh, better solution for support students. Please uh, share that kind of, that, that yes, that, uh, that direction a little bit more. Uh, um. We study uh, about we 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 are now analyze the students' data, like uh, how long how often they uh, log in or how long stayed in online site, how they can solve the problem, and the kind of data we can accumulate it, so uh, and then we are analyze it. So we predict the student's achievement, a final achievement, we try to do. So uh, the, we can see, we can predict the result, or we can uh, give uh, adaptive feedback to develop student's achievement. So we try to uh, do, uh, we try to do it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, yes, we started this online open open secondary uh, open secondary education program to expand uh, the student uh, student in difficulty, expand the student chance. But it it uh, through the uh, online uh, using the technology, we can find the better way to the better way to support the students. So I think uh, with so as as experts uh, recommended in our education, I hope in the education sector we are more proactive to using digital technology and for future generation. Thank you so much, and I think we are all, all, our time is almost uh, uh, done. So I will I would like to uh, th say thank you for everyone and then participating. At uh, actively and pre preparing for all uh, innovative and comprehensive uh, presentation. So I would like to ask uh, our uh, principal education specialist, Santi Zaganatan, for the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Megyeon. And thank you to everyone for joining the session today, uh, especially thanks to uh, Yuni Huang and Father Benigno for uh, sharing their 
work and their insights with us and also for ADB colleagues, Yumi, Zigang and, and Shane. Uh, I enjoyed listening to the presentations and to the, and to the perspectives on um, online uh, secondary education. Um, uh, I think, you know, when we think about the digitalization proceeding at such breakneck speed, uh, it's it's inevitable that uh, that we need to consider strategies that that address online uh, and digital solutions in a much more uh, abiding uh, way as part of the as part of the education system. Um, uh, you know, you need uh, you need uh, shared very interesting pillars like you know she talked about the tech readiness, content readiness, pedagogical readiness, and M and E readiness. And Father Benigno talked about you know the um, digital learning for digital natives and that, you know, we really need, we can use uh, digital solutions to also engage learners, the millennials and the sort of digital natives who, who have a very different way of interacting with the world and how to engage them in the education process. Um, I think there's no question that um, online systems can actually help to improve access and, and quality. Um, uh, I, th I think, um, you know, if, if we think about the developing countries, uh, universal secondary education is still not being achieved. And if we want to go through the conventional brick and mortar way, I, I, I don't think we will be able to achieve, uh, you know, universal access for secondary education at, at speed and, and online systems and online secondary education can definitely help to accelerate the progress towards universal secondary education, which then paves the way for greater access to tertiary education, because without the foundation of secondary, it's impossible to access tertiary education. And, and in this context, you know, we shouldn't forget that uh, you know, the whole digital solutions, which uh, prepare young people for the future are also critical for, uh, for succeeding in, in tomorrow's um, in tomorrow's markets and similarly quality. I think uh, uh, you know the the speakers referred to the um, the possibility of using adaptive learning, personalized learning, as a way to address learning deficits, and and there is uh, definitely great potential in in doing this. And also equity, um, you know, for a development bank, this is so important. Um, uh, you know, again, the sort of the access to opportunity for education multiplies many fold through digital solutions and, and it opens up both synchronous as well as asynchronous opportunities that uh, students who may be in different kinds of problems, whether it's disability or economic compulsions, to be able to access high quality education. So I think we need, uh, so in, in, when we think about putting uh, online secondary education for, for increasing access quality uh, and equity. I mean, I'd like to share some, some uh, points. One is that, I mean, given the, uh, the digitalization is a mega trend and it's really redefining the, the, the very underlying paradigms of how teaching and learning takes place, whether it's not just about the millennials. So, so how, how can we re-engineer the whole instructional design uh, in the context of online learning. So we, we really need to probably probe a little bit more to make it, uh, make pedagogy and delivery more friendly for, for uh, digital solutions. Um, and the second is that uh, digital skills. Uh, so one is digital solutions to access, but also how um, digital skills can be imparted. Uh, uh, you know, there's a, Gartner has estimated that by 2024, 80% 80, 80 of secondary schools will need to be offering digital skills uh, so, uh, curriculum in one way or another. Um, and uh, the third point I wanted to make is that we talk about tech-enabled tech remediation and catching up on learning deficits, but also we can think about tech-enabled solutions for both in-school and after-school initiatives, and also uh, non-academic kind of uh, uh, aspects such as counseling, uh, uh, you know, coaching, and helping to build the sort of you know the the the, the, the skills to succeed in the in future future markets, and how we can look at various modes of digital solutions and 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 possibly in the context of developing countries, we need to consider mobile first solutions, uh, you know, in a much more uh, accelerated way. 
and uh, and and I think uh, uh, there was also reference to this about learning to learn. Uh, becoming very integral to the education process. And, and finally, the point I wanted to make also is about you know, uh, social emotional skills that Zigang talked about and, and, and Father Benigno talked about the fire in the heart and, and you know, responsible decision making. So we shouldn't let technology and digitalization uh, you know, lose the touch with, uh, you know, so we have to consider learning with you know, humanistic education. We shouldn't forget the, the connect with real issues, real people, and, and the real connect in societies. And that's that will really determine the human well-being of the future and how the digital solutions uh, interface with the with the physical and uh, you know biological worlds and how students can make sense of this in a in a in a healthy balance. Uh, uh, so I just want to uh, bring that out at, at the end. While digitalization is a mega trend, we shouldn't forget the, the real real world and social emotional issues also. Thank you very much. Thanks for an interesting afternoon. Back to you again. Now, thank you so much. You are comprehensive, well, beautiful wrap up of our webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, I hope uh, this webinar will be helpful to think about uh, alternative way of expanding as the as the title, expanding the education access and improve the quality of education, and then using digital technology more actively. So support to support our students better to continue their to continue their study as they want every anywhere anywhere anytime. So we uh, we hope our uh, we hope uh, I I wish we had I wish we had achieved that dream. Thank you everyone, and then um, thank you so much for our panelists and uh, presenters. Thank you so much. Bye bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.